Good evening, Twitch. How you doing? It's Sunday night. Hope you're having yourself a good weekend and making the last minutes of the weekend count. And hope you're ready for another week. But for tonight, we're going to be playing a little bit more Final Fantasy 15 and jump into our next episode with Ignis, my personal favorite character of the group. Pretty much call him the tactician, the caregiver, the strategist, whatever you want to actually call him. He's basically the one who can look at everything with a very objective point of view. How you doing, Garland? How are you doing tonight? You're on spring break. Very nice. I hope you have uh, that. I hope you have yourself a lot of plans, and I hope you go through with them. It's a good time to get out of your own shell and try something new. Especially when you don't have em as many obligations. For me, though, I'm gonna be playing on more Final Fantasy 15. I'm gonna be kind of honestly ending Final Fantasy 15 is kind of bittersweet. I honestly would be cool playing this game even more, but at the same time, it's it, you just want to move on because there are just way too many games out there. Spent your entire Saturday and Sunday reading. That sounds almost very similar to what I was doing. I spent most of my weekend studying and writing. So do not worry, you still have your entire week ahead of you to go out and connect with a few people. I wonder if there's actually an option to go back to the old uh, the old credits, but then again, it makes sense. No, I am not in university. No, I'm way too... I am an old man. I am an old man. <laughs> oh. Way too many games out there and way too many games are trying to go with the multiplayer uh, aspect. Especially when you have more and more games being... People playing them for a certain amount of time and then just moving on and it just being more or less completely abandoned. Making it very... Like, if anything, a lot of game companies, what they need to do is... On top of simply just developing a game. And it feels like... And this really shouldn't be on the heads of developers, but if they are making games now, and they're involving multiplayer, a lot of game companies have to actually step it up, along with, you know, their marketing and actually creating those groups. Not It doesn't have to be a hardcore group, but they do have to cultivate an actual place where people could go and play games. Because as more and more games are entering the online space, people can't actually... Uh, you treat streamers like normal public treats, sporting events, spectacle, uh, spectacles to watch. That's, that's honestly a good practice, honestly. I mean, there are a lot of games out there. Sea of Thieves. There's a perfect example. Hello, Mecha GM. How are you and everyone doing? How are you all doing this week, this fine Sunday night? Thank you very much for the host. I'm always greatly appreciative. But yeah, no, if you do treat streamers like normal public, uh... Uh, you know, normal, like, public sporting events and stuff, it's honestly a good practice. Like, there are a lot of games out there that game developers are actually making, honestly, just to be watched as a spectacle. Very much as if you were with a group of friends, just huddling around the television, and one person's playing the game, and you're sitting back watching, eating some snacks. There's nothing wrong with that, it's just put down into a bigger, you know, a, a game, some games are being developed around that concept, of course. The difference is, they're not, con you know, the streamer would potentially be trying to convince you to buy that game, or convince you it's a game that's worth your money. Which I personally still side on the fact that it should be based for the consumer. You need to, streamers need to be on the side of consumers while they're actually working uh, with gaming, com with game companies, or public, or, uh, or public relations and such. But enough talk about that uh, sort of banter. That's honestly something I really want to try and get into. Just actually reveal who works in the industry, what they do, and that's something I've always been kicking around in my head, because I'll be honest, like, a lot of people who work in this game industry are very much unknown, and I think they should be better known. But why don't we jump on in here? Enough of the, enough of the delays here. We're going to be playing Episode Ignis here. And the very interesting cover here with Ravis and... Uh, Ignis, with Luna Freya and uh, Noctis basically out cold. Let's see what this episode is like. It's probably take us the entire stream to go through. I'll be honest, I actually like episode Gladio. That was actually a very straightforward fun. And one other thing. 
I don't know if this is... I guess it is in spoilers, because you could basically take control of the characters. I could... You know, the funny part is, I more or less have that haircut Ignis has right now. I could easily have that hair. I could easily just sculpt my hair that way in a second. <clears throat> but... Extraverse, huh. So there's more to this game than meets the eye. I can, believe I, was I can believe I was going with it. Never mind, let's just jump on in here. And go straight into the game. Like difficulty, we'll always be playing normal. All right, episode Gladio. I enjoyed that, it was straight for, uh, very straightforward, and it was different than playing, actually taking control of Gladio when you're playing the actual main game of Final Fantasy XV. Having expended all his energy in the fight with Leviathan, not just collapse on t upon the altar of the Tide Mother. Though their conflict has ended, the battle between the gods and the Imperial forces rages on. Fearing for his friend's safety amid the chaos of war, Ignis races through the ruined streets of Altitia to rescue the fallen prince. You know, I wonder how Prompto landed that vehicle. It's basically on a rocket. Listen well. A king cannot lead by standing still. A king pushes onward always, accepting the consequences and never looking back. That said, a king can accept nothing without first accepting himself. Should he stand still, I ask you to stand by him and lend him a hand. As his friend, and as his brother. Please, take care of my son. I'm afraid... I must ask your forgiveness. For those of you who haven't seen this, this is effectively Chapter 9 through Ignis's point of view. Chapter 1, Callings. Oof, Ignis got hit hard. Calamity, 3,000 health, 100, it's one times damage, but his hair is still perfect. You know, I wouldn't mind actually cosplaying as Ignis, I could totally pull it off. He's L to climb up. From 
How many points do I have? 20 potions. Four Phoenix Stones. Looks like my items actually carry over from uh, Episode Gladio. I think that's like. No, oh, I mean, not the potions. Yeah. I'm using daggers, it seems. Oh, if this is a stealth, I'll be happy. Ignis' spell daggers are, can be imbued with elemental properties. Press the directional button. Had to switch between elemental enhancements. Press up to flame bind your spell dagger's blade, imbued with fire t uh, fire type elemental energy, are strong in single targets. Flame bind your spell daggers. Oh, really? You're only gonna give me a minute for that. Easy. Like I have tactical gauge and all right, frost is actually best for everyone. Blades imbued with ice type elemental energy deal and uh, damage to enemies around the target. As time stands still. Wow. I just saw that while I was playing. <laughs> Fifteen. Probably actually take a look for items and such as well. But how are you guys doing? What game? What games have you guys been playing as of late? I know I ask that every night, but honestly, when I do these streams, I kind of care more about, you know, care about more of the people watching and what they're up to, instead of just simply talking about myself. I wonder what that is. Obviously, it's a limit break. I've no time. See. Blades imbued with lightning type elemental allow the wheel to zip across fields and strike far away foes. Alright. Oh, that's a lot of enemies. And that's really badass. Hold B to collect your thoughts and focus and focus or dodge attacks and land counter strikes to fill the yellow meter. Then press B and the meter is full to gain total clarity, allowing you to target and attack multiple enemies at once. Give me one second. <coughs> when you gain total clarity, your spell daggers perform differently. Okay, so he basically plays the same. The exact same as you did in 15. The main story for 15. Flame daggers for taking out a single enemy. Frost daggers for multiple enemies. And deal incredible damage to shocked enemies. Well, there's plenty of water around to do that. Left button immediately after taking damage to steady yourself. Press X in the time to prompt and deliver a counter attack. Ah! I'm wondering how it uses Lance. Oops. Come on. You can attack me. Oh, I guess you just gave me from attacking, okay. Bring together consecutive hits to increase your damage output, okay. And there we go, total clarity.
You played Splatoon 2 and Zelda Breath of the Wild. Nice. This is it. Yeah, they just wanted me to use it. A lot of people have been playing Splatoon 2. I've been tempted to actually buy Splatoon 2 myself, actually. But, the darn game never goes on sale. Oh, please say he's gonna get a grappling hook. You obtained a hookshot from a fallen Magitech trooper. Press left trigger to pull yourself up and... A high ground. Oh, I love these type of games. Do I just have to hold it? No, I don't. Palio District has fallen. Imperial forces have overtaken the city of Altitia. Press, press down, press R3 to check the presence of the, on the situation map. Press right button to observe and uh, to observe the state of Altitia from above. Different colors show which party controls a different area. Niflheim, Accordo, or Open. Thing. Wipe out Imperial forces in an area to return control to Accordo. Attention. Interesting. Oh my goodness, you literally... That's a lot of districts. Can I zoom in? Look around, sit map. Change view. Oh, okay. Wow. We are literally going across this entire place. Right. Units, the Hydrian has fallen to the Archean. Imperial forces moving from the city center toward the altar. All units withdraw from the front lines immediately. I repeat, all units withdraw immediately. Check the Empire's strength in a given area from the fluctuating power balance in the upper left. Claim an area by wiping out all Imperial for those forces posted in that sector. Eh. <laughs> Come on. There we go. That's what I wanted. Doesn't look like you lose your max HP either. Okay. <laughs> All right, that's the wrong thing to attack. There's a delay. Okay. Oh, so he just falls in danger. Yeah, so he has a max HP. The dodge command is the, is always the prompt for it, is always behind. Dara Street has fallen. Madam Secretary, come in. What now? I need your help. I fear Noct is in danger. 
as is the entire city of Altitia, in case you haven't taken a look around. He and his girlfriend are probably long gone. No, I made a promise to keep him safe. A promise I intend to keep. How noble. I'll see what my men can do, but I won't promise anything. Huh, I wonder what all these sharp buttons are for. Do you copy? <laughs> Loud and clear. <laughs> What's your stuff? This is really interesting, actually, for a game mode. This is really weird for a game mode, actually. It's kind of cool, though. Prompto. Seriously actually having me look at items? They are actually having items here. Note left by prompt. How are you even going to read the note? Take a break and save your game at supply stations. You know, because you can just rest. Now the chapter is called Ignis. The city is surrounded by water and there are airships that feel way too much Sonic or Six right now. Well, don't try and get too... Don't try and falter too much, man. Remember, this is a Final Fantasy game. It's not developed by, uh... Sega or any of their teams. I'll be honest, I never actually played through, uh... Sonic 06. A lot of items here. Take a lot of damage for doing this stuff. Ancient dragon tooth. My god, what the heck do they really want here? Then again, the entire city just kind of blew up, so. and I love how I'm jumping, but the cursor is like saying, hey, you're gonna pick up the item all the way by the dumpsters. Like, you have to do this weird selection. Sonic 06 was basically them trying too hard to look like Final Fantasy. That's an interesting argument you have there. That's a very interesting argument you have. Oh, so it's a treasure room. Okay. So it's basically the entire area. That's actually interesting. Liter they literally just let you explore the entire city. Well, city in ruins at least. Have you seen the open? I yeah, I remember it. I remember definitely looking over the top and feeling really like it looked amazing because this was during the time of the uh, the Sonic engine or the Hedgehog engine, I believe it was called. Oh, there was just something else. I wonder if I get to. I'll probably actually get to keep all these items here. guess I can just go up there. Yep. Yeah, that prompt shows up way too... That prompt shows up way too late. What is he targeting? Like, I'm holding down the lock on... Really? That did not do what I wanted it to. I swear, the one, the targeting system here is really weird. Like, sometimes it just wants to work, sometimes it doesn't. Ah, 
There we go. That's a very arbitrary set of numbers that I do not understand at all. So what does... I wonder what the... Uh, the uh, surprise, there's actually a store here. I would like to buy uh, some goods right here. Wow. Okay, actually, 2,000 gil. I guess that's probably why they let you share, sell stuff then. I don't think we'll need it, though. Interesting, though. They have that... I love grappling hooks in games. I think I learned to love them back in the days of Tenchu. Wonder, can I use it on the enemy? No, I cannot. That's a shame. Oh, so it's after you get struck. Okay. Interesting. So if you just hold it down, nothing's gonna happen. That is very annoying, actually. There we go. What does right trigger? Ignis, high jump, high jump. Alright! That was badass. So what? One overclock is two. Oh, so I guess I'm in a different district, and it looks like time has stood still. Like the assassin of the group. Come on, let me... Really? I can't attach that one? Can I attach now? Nope. There we go. This really feels like it's a bit unfocused, honestly. It's clearly, you know, it's like they want you to explore and take out the stuff. Problem is, there's not much room to fight in these places. Or stuff like that happens because of the targeting system. Where you just end up throwing yourself overboard. Let's see. Let's try what Overclock does. Since they're not explaining what these do. All right, looks like you just attack with all abilities. Let's see. I guess the goal would probably be just clear up all the districts. It's a little... I'm surprised, actually. You would think... Oh, that, never mind. There you go. Actually, just show where all the enemies are. I know you've been playing for Final Fantasy XV all month, but is this your first time being able to catch it? So what is this fighting system? They really tried to streamline the controls for this game, or the fighting for this game. They really, like, this is not, it's not fully representative of the actual game itself. I would honestly say, if you're trying... The way they simplified it is effectively a lot of the combat in this game, you basically just have to hold down the X button, or square button, just to attack. There's, diff there's three different control prompts, though, I should actually mention that first. So, if you don't like one setup, you can change it. The one I have it set up is, um... I just have to hold down uh, the square button to attack and use the shoulder buttons to uh, lock on and such. So this is kind of more of a, I guess you would say, a smaller scale. Of the actual main game. Yeah. 
Because really, you're only, you could actually end up playing as the other characters, but you have to actually invest uh, into the, what effectively is a sphere grid. Uh, to actually get the rights to play as other characters. But overall, the fighting system, to me, like, the big problem with this fighting system is that it tried to, it streamlined everything. But in the process, it made things more complex than it actually needed to be. It kind of made the game a little bit more button busy uh, than it actually needed to be, and like I said, this this is a personal opinion, but I think it didn't exactly it makes it very complicated to control at times. I don't even know what I'm actually targeting. This will be very interesting to see what I'm targeting. All right, it has me actually target that. Interesting. So you have basically what is, uh, I'd say this is actually close to what you're playing with here. So when you move around the D-pad, you're effectively selecting what weapon you want to do for Ignis, its elements. There is actually supposed to be a down if you're playing Noctis. Noctis can basically equip anything and everything. You can equip magic, daggers, great swords, everything. But then you have... This is this part is actually special to the game itself. Let's see, how many more sectors? All those sectors are open. Come on. Ah, oh, I'm not close enough. Are you serious? Thank you. But instead of grappling hooking around, you could basically uh blink uh around the area. It's not as effective, or has as much reach as... It doesn't have as much reach as the, uh, I guess you would say... Come on, really? It's a grappling hook. This will get me everywhere and anywhere I want to be. But it really is just as simple as, like, hold down, you know, hold down a button, you're targeting an enemy. And then you get tacked to it. Actually, I should just use this and warp. Ah, come on, really? There we go. That was not good. Love how it has a self-destruct function. But there's no like damage multiplier like you're seeing down here in the corner. I mean, do you have any other questions about the combat system? I might be able to an uh, answer that a little bit better. Come on. Like, this is a little bit, a little bit more pressure. Also, I love the fact that Ignis is a Dragoon. That's gonna hurt. Like, I think the reason why it becomes more complex is because they just try to add more things to the game. And I kind of getting the same feeling from this as well. It looks like it's trying to be Batman. No, it doesn't actually really have... It somewhat has, I guess, what you would call the Arkham combat system. It's it's halfway there in that respect. I mean, this was Square Enix, Enix's basically attempt with one of their main teams to make a more open world game. Because the way Final Fantasy XV basically ran was, I guess, apparently the opposite of Final Fantasy uh, XIII. So Final Fantasy 13, if you know about that, it's 
you know, apparently it's a straight corridor and then it suddenly becomes open world, much like many actual uh, RPGs. You know, you're very much on a straight and narrow path and then all of a sudden you get, like, an airship or something to open up the world. Final Fantasy XV, in terms of its story and narrative, is the exact opposite. Like, the grappling hook... This is not Ignis's day. Alright. Have you located the ring yet, Commander? And what of Luna Freya? Both, High Commander. But our forces are unable to extract either at present. We've no way of approaching the altar so long as the Archean stands in our way. Gods are on his side. <sighs> Neither the King nor the Oracle will escape with their lives if the fighting continues. Order a full retreat. I'm going in alone. Uh, but, sir... I assume you are already familiar with how I got this arm. Yes, sir. Then you must also know the ring is worthless without one who can wield it. Uh, very well, sir. No, I'm on the same level. I honestly do miss turn-based. Has he forgotten his place entirely? Or is he too concerned about his sister to care? Huh? I mean, this game. I you could I could basically tell you this right now that the game does have a wait mode. It's probably not involved in this, but it does have a wait mode. I like that. That's actually hilarious. What do you mean aesthetic choice of mixing medieval? That's always been... I. It's always been something that Final Fantasy has always done, is try and have a somewhat of a sci-fi effect. Oh, hello. Coral? Buzz. Hi, little coral. Yeah. Goodbye, coral. Are you serious? Come on. It's, it's just, this is really one of the few times people will basically see the game from... There's two of them, isn't there? Yeah, there is. Come on! It's over. I'm gonna be using the high jump a lot just because I like dragoons. And remember not to do that. Hello. Come on, really? This can't be. Why? I will tell you right now, potions are overpowered. Okay, there are way too many enemies here that are beating the crap out of me. Gotta be an attack I can do here. Not apparently. Attention, all units. Assemble at the docks and prepare for withdrawal immediately. We depart in three minutes. Wait, I'm headed to the altar. I need a boat. Have you lost your marbles? No, but we'll lose the king if we don't act. Give him what he wants. Understood. Keep them. I'll take Gil instead. <laughs> Be 
Ain't a hard question, Iggy. Do you copy? Yes or no? Yes, I copy. Then speak up next time. Look, I'm just as worried as you are. But we can't go losing our heads. If we want to save Nock, we got to keep it together. Yes. I suppose you're right. We'll keep moving. Hang in there, Iggy. I will. Thanks. Hop in the boat. A bottled message. Like, I think this is really the first time, I guess, for a lot of people, they just haven't seen the game or seen a Final Fantasy as realistic as this. Imperial Banner. It's interesting, though. It's like always having this constant perspective. Obviously, they're basically going to take me around the entire place. Going from district to district. As I can also see what soldiers. I mean, I, you know, I like it to a point. Because even games like, was it, Final Fantasy VI and stuff. And even this actually even holds that reminiscence. It's just that I think it's more jarring for people because they're looking at what is effectively as close to realism as as possible. Ooh, Magitech Axe. Really? Come on. Send me over. Citizens. But never actually having to see an actual person. Let's see. There you are. Ready to ship out. Well, ready as I'll ever be. You must get the civilians out of here while there's still time. Listen, are you sure about this? Of course. We'll just make sure you come back alive. Both of you. There we go. That's the, yeah, that's the jarring part about it, is when you actually throw in something very realistic. Should be able to reach the altar this way. To something very, uh, fantastical. Hookshot wire has snapped. God damn it. I must thank you for your visit to Port Bottom. Do allow me to express my gratitude. Well, apparently you can't shoot with a gang. I see oh, I actually got shot. Holy crap. Oh, this doesn't sound weird, but the way I felt Japan has been called, uh, commoditizing everything in the culture. Could you explain that? Commoditizing. Am I si- I am actually too close to the boat. Wow, I got too close to the boat. And that actually caused me to take damage. That's... not good.
I mean, if you're talking about like imports and exports and actually making their products something that people would want to buy outside of their country, then you know that's that effectively is actually what you know the market there. But the other half of it is basically trying to actually create in a product that is more has a more wider appeal. You know the old saying, sex sells, I feel like that, but further along. Well, you have to understand, like, are you actually coming from saying a Japanese market selling games to people who understand the culture or people who aren't who are foreign to the culture? And their society. I mean, you say sex sells, and then it's like, okay, you know, there's a reason why, you know, your average consumer looks at things like Dead or Alive or Senra Kagura and say, like, oh, no, that's just, you know, that's sex sells to them, to an average consumer. But that's not really, you know, those games actually have character and actually have, you know, merit and have hard work behind it. But then you have games like The Guy Game. Those are games that say to me that, you know, that's the sex cells. Yeah, they literally just get hit with a missile. I mean, so you can't just simply say, you know, sex cells as the core of the argument. You have to know exactly what your what your product actually is. Like Dead or Alive has always been a at its core has always been a fighting game. With a very Convoluted. Uh, I know where my boat is. You feel that there's a humaneness to them. It's not actually there. No, like, if you actually really do play through Final Fantasy XV, what the game actually does well is... What Final Fantasy XV actually does well is that. Is actually having that road trip individual character connection with Noctis and his retinue. Ah, God. Oh dear. Um, I don't have actual control of this yet. All oh, right, Ignis was the one who kidnapped him. So that's why the general is actually so out of his way to get Ignis. I'm afraid not. It will never be yours. I'll make sure of it. You shall prove the day you defy the Nipplehide. Oh, this is not good. That's fine, we've got time. I don't like these. I don't like the situation. Hmm. Unless chapter one. Save your progress. Yes. Wonder how many chapters are actually in this. Chapter two chances. 
I think I think you need to work on like your definition of commoditizing and humaneness then, because if your argument just comes sex sells, it needs to definitely elaborate on that a lot more. You have a point. Enemy of my enemy is my friend. Then it's settled. Yeah. All right, that was pretty cool. <laughs> Not what I wanted to target. There's the blind side. Cool. I wanted to see what that looked like. discussing the idea as long as you have like your definitions down and such it feels like because of this was DLC these episodes were DLC they got to flesh it out a lot more than the um, than the uh, the added moments of the actual game itself or using the combat system they made specifically for 15 oh. you might be of use after all follow me if you're ready. Oh, goody. Definitely made sure there's a lot of areas to explore. And I mean a lot to explore in this dang in this place. Oh god almighty, not postmodernism. No offense, I've honestly really learned to despise the philo the philosophy of postmodernism, because it often subscribes to nihilism as a solution for everything, which involves taking no actual concrete or practical action to fix any problems. It just laments and wallows in its own in its own indulgence. Of, in, of false intellectualism. And that's completely boarded off already. I think that's why you have this glut of self guilt or people. Talking about, you know, basically they're approaching their solutions. Let's see, you don't. It's weird. It's, I understand why they made the rest spots, uh, rest spots here for this game mode or for the episode so you can restore your max health. Yeah, his arm is made of Magitek armor. The nihilism comes in when people try to apply the philosophy. That's the, that's the thing. That's the problem. C. 
super restorative. Gradually restores HP. Oh, there actually is a regen. Feels weird, actually, this game giving me so many things. I think these key items are... Yeah, key items are basically just meant to sell. It's really weird, actually. Yeah, buy some stuff, then. Like I said, it's... The pro like I said, the problem comes when people actually try to apply said philosophy to actual problems. You needn't waste your time. I've ordered a full retreat. They'll be gone soon enough. Very well. About his allegiance. I want to know that first. Why turn against the Empire? Why now? My sister's life is at stake. Is that not reason enough? Oh. The paths we tread may differ, but the blood coursing through our veins is one. So too is our calling. I must protect her. Hmm. About not. Is it safe to assume this means you'll lend Nocta a hand? Don't be asinine. Our interests may have aligned in this moment, but I have not allied myself with him. Yep, that is definitely taking the same enemy of my enemy as my friend. What of it? I have doubts that you were born with a prosthetic. Your doubts are correct. I once believed it was I who was destined to dispel the darkness. This is proof I was wrong. Everyone's trying to put on the ring. Ignis is a man who believes in business, apparently. The Empire is after the ring of the Luciai. If the ring falls into the wrong hands, I fear there's little hope for either of them. Then we must hurry. Yeah, no, I could totally pull off that haircut that Ignis currently has. I'm aware. Magitech armors are patrolling the area. Approach a mech undetected, then press A on Ravis's signal to deliver a stealth kill. I know. Oh, less than a minute. Shouldn't be too bad. I think the one interesting thing is, you know, the bigger these budget games get, the more people can end up having an opportunity to uh help kill. Keep up. Right. Make more well one, make more cinematic moments like this, and two, add small increment gameplay elements. But I think that was one of the downsides of Final Fantasy XV. They kept introducing new mechanics as the story progressed. Oh, goody. Come on. Let's make this quick. Gladly. That's one. You know, there was a we two weapons I'd love to get you to learn is daggers and knives and daggers and spears. That's when it gets fun. Do you truly believe Noctis is the one true king? I believe it goes without saying. Yet when the flames of war enshrouded Tenebrae, his father spared us nary a second thought. No savior king could possibly be born of such cowardice. <sighs> to aid the king is the Oracle's calling, is it not? Or have you simply forgotten the pledge sworn by your forebears? I have not forgotten, nor have I forgiven. This game does not let you actually stop and take a rest. Hello. Then let's end it. Yeah. 
find. Oh, that's not what I want to target. Targeting system to me is still a little janky. And I just never get what you actually want to uh, to target. Oh. Like all this right here, what you're seeing is just me actually just holding down the X button. I'm not actually doing anything, uh, really convoluted or anything like that. Like that's the simplicity they put into this game. I just wanted to see that ability once more. Come on. Actually, I can just do this. I think it's also interesting that you get to see the games. Uh, heck. Magitek Silver. Yep, Magitek What am I doing? I can just do this. All right. Well enough. You're resilient. I'll give you that. So, anytime you've seen the true the king. He still has much to prove. The darkness will not wait for his ascent. It will consume our star, and all upon it. I know. He may not yet grasp the gravity of his calling, but once he does, he will rise to the occasion and fulfill his destiny. One can only hope you're right. Explosion, you're all right. <laughs> Uh, usually that actually does damage to you, just to let you know, so you can't just... The only reason I didn't take any damage from that was because it was at a, a cutscene triggered. Another star... I don't feel like, if you know what you're doing... I can definitely see like someone who's new to these games definitely not having the easiest of times. Head to the altar, Move yes. Quickly. Right. <sighs> Knocked! Luna Freya. Hmm? Are you her dog? Aw. than even that of the six, purifying all by the light of the crystal and the glaives of rulers past. Only at the throne can the chosen receive it, and only at the cost of a life, his own. The king of kings shall be granted the power to banish the darkness, but the blood price must be paid. To cast out the usurper and usher in dawn's light will cost the life of the chosen. Many sacrificed all for the king, so must the king sacrifice himself for all. Now enter into reflection, let the light of providence shine within. <sighs> What did I just see? A vision of what's to come? <laughs> what happened to the dog? Now I'd love to see a game or story about the creation of these devices that save everybody at the cost of a life. Oh, that's more the- that's the magic part. That's the fantasy part. I mean, the creation of Magitech technology in this world is actually a little bit interesting. 
Although I will say, like, the if anything, I'd say the weakest part of the story for Final Fantasy XV was definitely the writing on the macrocosm. No. Stole from me my mother. And now they make a sacrifice of my sister. Get out of my way. What are you doing? What I should have done long ago. Ridding us of this menace. That is a lot of HP. No, I, 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 it definitely is one of the high moments for this game, is, for Final Fantasy VI at least, was suplexing the train. That was a mate, like, just, nope, oh, rather not. Love that he's part dragoon. <laughs> Missing that part. Nox didn't choose to become king. His ascension was ordained by the crystal. It wasn't mere happenstance. It was a mistake, one that must be corrected. You of all people. Understand how Noct feels. Bereft of both parents, forced to carry on despite losing those you love. You both feel that pain. I feel nothing. The power of the storm surges through my blade. Damn it. Too late. Don't worry, it goes both ways, Gra uh, Garland. It goes both ways, and I am not paying attention now in combat. There's advantages to both. It's over. This. You're mine. Oh, 
Oh, I just don't have any health, that's why. Have yourself a good night, Garland. I'm surprised, like, you can actually make him stagger. Ah, so that's what happens. Death to Noctis and his men! Oh, that's not good. Oh, I can't even actually... Oh my goodness, he's actually going for it again. And I... Ooh. He literally took all of my HP there. Free to live and love as you please. <laughs> you would have made a beautiful bride. Even in death, the Oracle does not rest. Only once the darkness is dispelled is her calling truly fulfilled. As in life, I know she will confront that challenge with a smile on her face. Oh, sister, please don't go. Please don't leave me. Two protectors. There's still more to this tale, though, apparently. Sacrifices. Are you all right? Where's Prompto? Well, well. What have we here? Oh, no. <laughs> you. Arden. Oh, dear. Was I that transparent? Oh. Crap. The game's up, my boy.
Oh, no. Come now, why not follow your liege's lead and stop resisting? <laughs> Never! You risk life and limb to safeguard the King of Kings, only to witness him fail, so... <laughs> You must be so disappointed. Unhand him! I know I am. Oh, what good is a world that only ever lets you down? Why not end it all right here? No. You can't. <laughs> no! My, you two certainly have become fast friends. Oh no. Oh, I already know what's going to happen, and that's not good. A suggestion. Rather than follow this flotsam and float away to a watery grave. Like back or do nothing. Interesting that you have this. I'm curious though, technically not doing anything is a choice. Well, this got interesting. Now we know he lost his eyesight. Well, if you're so keen on keeping him safe, I'd like to see you try. No time to waste now. If you're quick about it, you're the one liable to hurt me. I love the multipliers at five times. Enchantment has worn off. I should have drawn that out more. Nox. 
or Retainer's Resolve. Final results. Tactical skill, amazing. That was rather reckless. Word of our community's acclaim spreads. Is he... Is he... All right? More or less. All thanks to you. Thank goodness. Be still. Serve your strength. You have a calling to fulfill. Not Iggy! As do I. May fortune favor us both. And you as well, Noctis. See, they really underutilize Ravis as a character. Also, thank you very much, Savior, for the host. I, that's why I really like Ignis's character. But Ravis definitely did not get anything in terms of development. Man, it's been the last long time since I had my hairstyle like that. If I give up now, their sacrifices would have been for nothing. And you... You of all people... You should know that better than anyone. decision is yours to make, and yours alone. But do remember, we will stand with you always, and help you bear your burdens. Don't be afraid to let us share the load. I'll be back.
Ah, it was even a dedicated team. So in the end, Ignis knew, or anyone else, what was going to happen. Interesting. That's a part of the game I do need to play again. This honestly felt a lot short. This actually was shorter than uh, Gladio's. Like I said, I think that's the problem with a lot of the writing for Final Fantasy XV, was that it's great at focusing the small, intimate moments, but does not... doesn't do a good job of writing for the big picture. Or at least develop... or actually using their characters to create stronger character development. Wasn't all bad. I suppose we had some fun along the way. And our fair share of trouble, too. But I don't have any regrets. Luna and you guys brought me this far. And now, I'm on my own. Uh, no, you won't be going alone. I No, you're right. I mean, I wouldn't have made it all this way. Without you guys. Why stop now? In the end, I might not have you at my side, but I'll always have you in my heart. Thanks. Thanks for everything, Iggy. Why didn't they have any of this in the actual main game? <laughs> like, that's the thing that drives me nuts about that whole- about the writing for Final Fantasy XV. Like, I just really underutilized a lot of the characters to actually make the characters- or showed the growth or development of characters. There we go. You have unlocked a new branch of fate in Chapter 3, unlocked Extraverse, unlocked Friendly Match, acquired Spell Daggers, and various cooking utensils are now available for purchase. How oh, lovely. You receive the Crown's Guard Casual Attire for Ignis. Change into your new outfit and let your hair down for once. Ah, cool. And also the ending for the for this game also really really made me question why does that ending exist? Or at least why they showed that as their ending.
Alright, well, why don't we try the extra verse, then? Resume play from the Branch of Fate in Chapter 3. Yep, okay. Just takes us right to the very end. I am okay with this. The newfound allies race towards the altar, but find they are too late. Lady Luna Freya has passed. Enraged by his loss of his sister, Ravis lashes out at a still conscious Noctis, who he blamed for Luna's death. Sympathetic to Ravis's plight, yet determined to keep him keep his friend from harm, Ignis takes two arms. I'm gonna be questioning what's different then. Do I choose not to fight? Or they make the decision for me. I was honestly expecting at first with the wrangling of the holding of the dagger by Arden to Gladio. Oh, you to get right. stabbed in the Where's eye. Well, well, what have we here? <laughs> you. Oh dear, was I that transparent? The game's up, my boy. lead and stop resisting. No. Never! You risk life and limb to safeguard the King of Kings, only to witness him fail, so... <laughs> you must be so disappointed. Unhand him! I know I am. Oh, what good is a world that only ever lets you down? Why not end it all right here? No. You can't. <laughs> no! certainly have become fast friends. <laughs> Permit me to make a suggestion. Rather than follow this flotsam and float away to a watery grave, why not come with me? Hey, how's it going, Walnut? What do you say? I... I... Come on, agree, agree, agree. That has to be an option now. Lay along, yep. <laughs> That's his fate. Having arrived at the altar of the Tide Mother, Ignis finds himself surrounded by an empire. Arden then lays him two options, come along to Niflheim or get swept beneath the waves. What sacrifice is the young tactician willing to make to save his dear friend Noctis? Hmm? Uh, I, try, I try stream consistently, so you can always check the events to see uh, when I'll be streaming. Where are we? Oh, you have to ask? Why Zignotus Keep, of course. Otherwise known as the current residence of your precious <gasps> crystal. Have I piqued your curiosity? You must have so many questions. This is total fanfiction, what she if scenario. Yourself, if you dare. So we just finished the main it's good that he's brought me to Gralia. The question is why? What's his game? So Walnut just kinda catch up to speed. We just finished episode Ignis. 
it's all done, but they added an extra verse, which honestly I'm surprised considering this is effectively like, you know, choose your own adventure. And I notice a lot more game developers are actually doing that, and I don't know how to feel about that. I mean, it's inter interesting. Can I run? No, I can only walk. Art in Ignis, sitting in a factory, K-O-O-K-I-N-G. That type of fanfiction, and yes, that technically rhymes, don't play. <laughs> it's cool, man. It's fine. Blessed was the man born for the throne, yet he, so impure of heart, was denied by the stone and cast into ignominy. Feeding on the dusk and embracing the darkness, he spurned the dawn, affecting a life untouched by time. And through the coming of night eternal, he now seeks to exact vengeance upon his own blood. Vengeance upon his own blood? Is that why he's after Noct? The stone, chrysalis to the soul of our star, cradle to the king, destined to serve as vessel of its light. Gods and men alike awaited the coming of the Chosen as they fought to fend off darkness blight. For yep. he and he alone would possess the power to purge our star of its skirt. Not really must be the Chosen King after all. Oh, there you go. Finally got free. We can run! I'm surprised demons are actually here. Love that attack. I do have I do have enough stamina to run. What items did they throw me at? No, they gave me a set of items. I have less Phoenix Downs than I did before. Like, Ignis, just to let you know, they didn't really change anything about how Ignis played by the moment you took uh, control of him. I guess the only thing that's different is the, uh... After him. The, uh, I guess, damage multiplier. Now no longer called Rage, just called Damage. Hey, what do you guys feel like when it comes to, like, game developers writing multiple scenarios like this? Especially when it takes a lot of work to write stuff like this. Or, I guess, to actually design and develop this stuff. Nothing there. Nothing there. Nothing there. Okay. Room, the crystal room. Once the sacred ring is replete with power, the true king will complete his ascension. Only then can he banish the blight upon our star. By the power of the light alone was the chosen king made manifest. With the glaive of kings, the stone of legend, and the ring of light in hand, the chosen's power will surpass that of even the gods themselves. By that self-same power, with the true king as its vessel, the darkness shall be purged from our star, and dawn shall return to our world once more.
This was honestly one of the cooler parts. This In terms of design. Apologies, my throat's really dry. Well, this can't be canonical. You see, the revenge I seek is not upon the boy. I only wish to punish the crystal that cast me aside in favor of that insufferable fool. He's certainly taking his sweet time ascending as its champion, though. Would there were a way to expedite the process! nothing to me. Do with it as you wish. Uh, how did you get your hands on that? But I refuse to let Nott sacrifice his life to save ours. <laughs> I won't let you take him away. Even if it costs my own life to save him. I will pay that price! <laughs> <laughs> Take care, Nato. I don't even know what happened there. Oh, that's a lot of damage.
The ring's enchantment has worn off. Well, that's not good. Now Dosh whisks at the king's hand. Go for full on sacrifice. Sacrifice has granted you full power of the ring. For four minutes! Counter strike by 32 da tam times damage. He look like Wesker. I feel like that's an insult. Six times damage. It's over. Oh, that's a lot of damage. Not kill him? No, I can. Yeah, no, this was an over the top fight. When he looked like Travis Touchdown. I don't even remember you saying he looked like Travis Touchdown, honestly. I mean, he definitely had the haircut when his hair's, uh,. When his hair, when he has his hair groomed. Ah, so there is stuff against. Brilliant. <laughs> the best laid plans, eh? It may have eluded me for now. But rest assured, I shall have my revenge. Magnus! Knocked. How? Ravis. He lent us a hand, if you can believe it. What the hell were you thinking? How could we let this happen? How could I let this happen? This is all my fault. No. If I'm really some kind of savior, why can't I save the ones I love? I'm sorry. You guys have stayed with me. This whole time. 
And all it's done is cost you pain. anymore. All that ends now. Please, lend me your strength! Help me protect my friends! Listen well. A king cannot lead by standing still. A king pushes onward always, accepting the consequences and never looking back. And there's your fan fiction. <laughs> Our non canon ending, I guess. It's interesting that they actually had enough to put this in. Alright, let's make it downloadable content. I don't think I've ever seen Narnia with her hair down. Like I said, it's amazing we're at that level of actually making people look, you know, like people. You still have off moments, but... He shows him with his eyesight. It's been a long road, but at last we've arrived. Yeah. Prompto. Gladio. Iggy. For ten years, everything we've done was in preparation for this day. And today, we finish it. Right. Yeah. Today, we walk tall together.
Oh, so chapter 3, verse 2, Possibilities. <laughs> you know, it, seeing things like this just makes it more... Not really frustrating, but kind of somewhat disappointing, honestly, because they know they could make... They could have used those characters. Like, so much of the actual script, it seems like of the actual main story, was just cut and left on the cutting room floor. Because it shows that they actually know how to write and how to make dramatic moments and actually create actual character growth. But it seems for to they expedited all of the process or they decided to leave the character conflicts, the, the ways to actually show growth of the characters in place of the open world game design. And all that took precedent over actually creating a story, creating a narrative of characters actually meeting, conversing, conflicting. And you just don't get it until you actually, like, it shows that they know how to, you know, create something dramatic and bigger than oneself. But most of the game was just those small little moments that, you know, help you appreciate the characters. But it doesn't add up to creating an entire person or creating a more or creating that character growth I was talking about earlier. Like, I, it really shows that they left a lot on the cutting room floor, especially if they had the luxury to create, here's an alternate ending. Because I'll admit, having Ravis actually be alive, or having Ignis, maybe not Ignis doing the whole putting on the ring and getting his eyesight healed, obviously that goes a little too far in one direction. That's like they cashed, you know, it's like they went for... What well, is easily like the more traumatic and tragic decision to make Ignis lose his eyesight. But then they sacrifice in place any sort of development of connections of other characters connecting with other characters. And that's also what I think is that, you know, kind of what's missing from Final Fantasy XV. Aside from the fact that the Magitek and people becoming demons because zombies, that part can honestly just go to heck. It should have just been left. It's the darkness. Not humans turning into demons. Because you would think that would be discovered ages ago. That part, honestly, screw that. Completely, that's complete crap writing right there. You know, they could have created some other origin for the demons in any way, shape, or form, then humans become the demons because of the darkness. Then why are there a lot of monsters and such calivanting in the day? By the way though, this was actually fun. This was actually, this was, I especially like that, you know, it definitely, oh, the one downside about these, these episodes here, you really really play them once, and that's kind of it. They're more or less one and done. But I could totally pull off that haircut. But that's gonna do it for me tonight. I'm gonna done streaming here, so why don't we take a look and see who else is streaming right now. There's actually a couple people streaming tonight. There is... Speaking of Arkham games, I know Garland actually mentioned that earlier. New York Video Game Freak looks like he's actually streaming Batman Arkham Knight right now. Then you have Josh Jepson. He's actually playing Splatoon 2. I know we talked about that as well. Like I said, if that game ever goes on sale in some way, shape, or form, like an actual decent sale, not $6 off, then I might actually, I would actually want to get that game. And finally, who I'm actually going to give a ho going to give a host to, you can go say hi to him, is Exposure, and he's playing Warhammer Vermintide 2. If you enjoy playing games like Left 4 Dead, and want more of an RPG, uh, where your equipment will slowly start to matter, and with an actual cohesive narrative or storyline as you progress through the stages, then you will greatly enjoy 
Vermintide 2. That's me. That's gonna do it for me tonight. Tomorrow we'll take on episode Prompto. So I get to be firing a lot of guns. As always, though, thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed tonight's stream. And of course, as always, until then, take care. <laughs>